my mother only bought a gift for my son, excluding my daughter. Ada for leaving before she can give it. I'm using a throwaway account. My, M33, mother has a history of treating my son, J, M7, better than my daughter, L, F5. The pattern until today has been slightly larger gifts as well as a bit more attention and affection, noticeable but not egregious yet. My son's birthday was last Thursday, and my daughter's birthday is Monday, only four days apart. We live out of state, and this weekend was the only time my mother would get to see them. This was also the weekend of my brother's wedding, so everyone would be together. Important background, three weeks ago, my mother stayed overnight at our place and bought both of them a $60 blow-up pool for their birthdays. About a week ago, she called me and asked if my son would like a specific gift, a kid's, plastic, axe-throwing set from Costco. I said he would. When we got to the reception, my mother pulled my son aside and told him that she had a birthday gift for him and would give it to him on Sunday before we left. My wife and I looked at each other, knowing that likely she didn't have a gift for my daughter. We realized we were finally going to have to address this situation with my kids and my mother. But I let it go for the moment because my kids and I were in the wedding and were busy between the rehearsal and the reception. As we were leaving the reception, we all said goodbye to her, and she asked what time we were leaving the next day. I said 9 a.m., as we had to pick up our dog from boarding and my daughter's birthday was the following day, so we had a lot to do that afternoon. She then asked me if it would be okay to give Jay his birthday present before we left. I asked, did you get Ellie present? She responded, well, no, her birthday isn't until Monday. I responded, well, no, then. That wouldn't be fair to give one child a birthday gift and not the other. At this point, she blamed me, saying, well, you didn't give me any ideas for her. Then she suggested, oh, well, I can go and see what they have here at the hotel, a casino hotel in St. Louis, so not exactly anything a five-year-old would want. Again, I told her no, that wouldn't be appropriate. I was irate at this point but calmly addressed her. My mom asked if I knew the area and said she could run to Target and find something for her between 8 to 9 a.m. Again, I said no, and we needed to leave. Finally, she said, well, I could pick something out for her on my phone and have it shipped to her house. Again, I said no. My son would have a huge gift, and my five-year-old would have a shipping notification of a last-minute, no-thought gift from Amazon. My daughter has previously asked, why does grandma love Jay better, and I'm tired of making excuses for my mother. So instead of a 9 a.m. departure, we are leaving at 7.30. Once we are on the road, I will text her to return her gift for my son and let her know that we need some space. I'm tired of making excuses to my daughter. As we packed up and prepared to leave earlier than planned, I felt a mix of emotions. Anger, frustration, and sadness swirled inside me. My wife was equally upset but supportive, knowing how much this situation had been weighing on me. We got the kids into the car, and as we drove away, I took a deep breath and sent my mother a text message. I tried to keep it as calm and respectful as possible, but I needed to be clear. Mom, we've decided to leave earlier than planned. It's not fair to Elle that you brought a birthday gift for Jay and not for her, especially when their birthdays are so close. I'm asking you to return Jay's gift. We need some space to process this. I can't keep making excuses to Elle about why she feels less loved. We'll be in touch when we're ready to talk. I put my phone down and focused on the road, trying to push the situation out of my mind for the time being. The kids were quiet in the back seat, probably sensing the tension. My wife reached over and squeezed my hand, offering silent support. As we drove, my thoughts kept circling back to my mother's behavior. It wasn't just about the gifts. It was about the underlying favoritism that had been growing more noticeable over the years. I remembered how Elle would come to me, confused and hurt, asking why Grandma seemed to love Jay more. Each time, I'd brush it off, trying to protect both her and my mother, but now I realized that I had been enabling this behavior. Arriving home, we settled in and tried to make the best of the situation. We plan a special day for Elle, hoping to overshadow the negativity with love and attention. I wanted her to feel cherished and valued, not just on her birthday but every day. A few days later, my mother called. I hesitated before answering, but I knew we needed to have this conversation. I got your message, she said, 
her voice a mix of defensive and hurt. I never meant to make Elle feel unloved. I just thought, well, I don't know what I thought. Mom, I said, trying to keep my voice steady, it's not just about the gifts. It's about the pattern of favoritism. Elle has noticed it. She's asked me why you love Jay more. I can't keep making excuses for you. It's not fair to her. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. I didn't realize it was that bad, she finally said. I never wanted to hurt her. I'll try to do better. I hope you will, I replied. But for now, we need some time. We need to focus on our family and make sure both of our kids feel equally loved. After we hung up, I felt a sense of relief mixed with sadness. It wasn't an easy conversation, but it was necessary. My priority was my children, and I would do whatever it took to protect them from feeling unloved or less important. As time went on, we focused on creating a loving and supportive environment for both Jay and Elle. We celebrated Elle's birthday with extra enthusiasm, making sure she felt special and adored. It was a small step towards healing, but it was an important one. Looking back, I knew that addressing the favoritism head-on was the right decision. It wasn't easy, and it didn't magically fix everything, but it was a crucial step in ensuring that both of my children felt equally loved and valued. And that was what mattered most. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.